as we put the Georgia Tech game in the rearview mirror and move full speed ahead to North Carolina, is the same thing happening in recruiting? Can Miami keep that same momentum that they had prior to the Georgia Tech game? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Now, when I asked if Miami can keep that same momentum, a lot of you rightfully were probably saying, well, I think so. And I hope so, because they landed a commit the day after that Georgia Tech game from four star wide receiver Nye Carr, which is something the fan base really needed. Some good news after Saturday night, and obviously players and coaches have to look ahead because Miami has, on paper, a much tougher game this coming Saturday in Chapel Hill. We bring on our very good friend and recruiting overlord in these parts here on the Locked On <laughs> Network. Brian Smith is with us. Brian, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Alex. This uh, this game coming up with North Carolina is fun. There's some recruiting stuff going on. Good times. Yeah, and listen on uh, cuz I know some of the comments that I see after, you know, the Georgia Tech game, some of these are from Miami fans who just, you know, negative because over the years, you know, over the last 20 years have been tough. It makes people negative. Sure. Others are from opposing fan bases that are like, "How's mm. Mario going to recruit after that? Who's going to want it? The guy can't do math. The guy can't take a knee. Who's going to want to come and play for Miami?" Well, Nikar already said yes. Uh yeah. I've been reading some comments Brian from you know, some other players who are in the recruiting section, kudos to Kane Sport for getting some of these quotes like TJ Alford, who's a four star class yeah, of 2025 linebacker. linebacker out of Vero Beach. He says, quote, the loss doesn't affect how I see them at all. He said, because everybody has to take a loss at some point. It's just about how you respond to it overall. Uh, four star 2026 receiver Aaron Gregory said, quote, I don't think it affects it at all. He said, football is football. You win some, you lose some. Next week, they've just got to lock in and go 1-0. and Really? Honestly, crazy stuff happens because, let's be for real, who's really scoring with two seconds left on the clock, he said. So, I don't know, recruits, I, I can't, I'm not going to say that the Georgia Tech game helped recruiting, but, Brian, I don't think it hurt maybe as much as a lot of people <clears throat> are trying to say it did. You know my favorite line, the kids pick the person in the polo, not the logo on the polo. And in this case, it's still the same. Yeah, the, some of the kids, I'm sure, were like instant reaction or like, what is that? And if they didn't, are they human? Because that was a disastrous finish. There's no <laughs> there's no shortcut. Everybody yeah. and their brother made a joke or said something. And you know what? It is what it is. But you pick a school as a recruit nine times out of ten based on your relationships. If you can find somebody that puts in more effort than Mario, good luck to you. Uh, Bud Elliott, uh, 247 CBS Sports, huge and old guy. He even said recently, he goes, nobody holds his staff to a higher standard than Mario. And he does not like Miami. He does not. He's a Florida State guy. But he he's honest. He's like, so I'm not real worried about the recruiting aspect, especially locally. The only question I have, because, I mean, he's blessed. He coached at Alabama and he coached at Oregon. He has been at, on national staffs, especially Oregon. You have no choice. He's done so well with, like, we're going to talk about Aiden Breland, et cetera. I'm more mm -hmm. worried about out of state than I am in state. I'm mm. curious about that because Great it's question. different when you don't have a natural affection for a school or proximity, et cetera. But we don't know yet because I don't have any way, because I've never really seen anything like that. I don't have any way to grade it. But overall, yeah, I, I'm not real worried about recruiting. That's the one thing this staff does tremendously well. Well, let's talk about a name you mentioned, Aiden Breland, five-star defensive lineman out of modern day in California. He is going to be announcing this weekend, I believe on Saturday, between 
uh, Oregon, Georgia, and Miami. Now, I'm not optimistic about this one, and, and it's not because of what happened in the Georgia Tech game. I right. wasn't optimistic about Aiden Breland even before this past weekend. Uh, there, there's been, you know, there was a lot of smoke for Georgia. I feel like most of the smoke lately has been for Oregon, very little for Miami. We know Miami really wants a five-star defensive tackle. They've they've tried really hard for some other guys. How do you think Breeden's announcement is going to play out this weekend? I think it's Georgia based on the tea leaves, but that kid just doesn't do interviews, man. So, I mean, it's, I've been fooled so many times this year. I wouldn't put any stock in my own thoughts. Okay. It's just, it's just it with, with NIL and these kids all looking at things nationally, like look at the three schools he's got finally, he doesn't have an in-state school. Yeah, he doesn't. Right. And he's at modern day, which for those that don't know is as big a Homer school for SC as there's ever been. And they're not getting the SC, like they're not getting those kids. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but the bottom line is he's not doing anything. That's surprising to me with coming down to three. Cause a lot of kids are now doing, it's just bizarre, but still it, it is a little weird with the modern day USC thing. Yeah. So if he picked Miami either this weekend or later, cause he'll still take calls. It wouldn't surprise me. Miami needs one more D tackle. They've got two. Daylon Russell, I didn't know if he was going to be the tackle. He's 270, 275. I went and saw him recently. And they got Artavius, who's the biggest gym in the class in a Love lot of ways. Dude. People don't know about him. He's from Bluntstown. It's a 1A program. And he just runs. I mean, it's his high school film is hilarious. They put him at tight end and running back and stuff. And he's 310 pounds. <laughs> I feel sorry for the mothers in the stands. Got to watch that. But they're okay there, but if they added Breland, man, this would just be the icing on the cake. And again, I'm not concerned about the commitment part. I still think he'll pick Georgia on Saturday. Mm. Miami's not going to give up, brother. That's that's a two-signing day kind of deal because he's a special player. Now, you know, I mentioned Miami did land a big verbal commit a day after that Georgia Tech right. game. And, and you know, th this was obviously um, – this had been in the works for a long time, and, and we had a feeling Nykar was going to be a Miami commit. He followed through with that on Sunday – this is a four-star game changer, Brian. Uh, you've actually had the privilege of watching him in person. I've only watched the tape, and it's clear on tape what a, dif uh, what a difference maker car is. You were telling me in person it, it's a whole different story completely. Sometimes you <clears throat> walk into things. I went to a game two years ago at Colquitt County. It's my favorite place in the country to see a high school football game, South Georgia. And I didn't. I knew they had players, and I knew one of their coaches and all that. But they had enough guys. He wasn't like somebody they said, hey, make sure you watch this kid. Well, they were going up against a school that's constantly in the state finals, blah, blah, blah. And he went out and scored two touchdowns. And he just ran by guys. And this is a team that, like, they've got a kid that's a freshman now at Auburn that starts, et cetera. Like, they got ball players. Hmm. And I'm like, I don't know who this kid is, but he's going to play power five somewhere. And I just kind of loved it at that at that point. You know, he's Colquitt County. It's just a random game. But. He's just gotten faster and faster. He's a kid that can put up the football cleats and put on the spikes and go to college. He has that kind of speed. And he's also very elusive. And ironically, because he's not the biggest fellow in the world, 5'10", 5'11", he's really good at 50-50 balls. I'm not saying it's a Norris Moss or something like that. You know, you got to prove it at the college level. But as a track athlete, body style, type of play and all that, that's kind of where he's – that's kind of the dude I would compare him to. Mm. So – Miami is getting some of the big bodied receivers. They're trying to get more obvious with Jeremiah. We'll talk about him in a second, but this is the kid you can put in the slot, but he's physical enough to play outside too. He's a pain. Nye is a really unusual player because not many guys are going to get hands on him in space. Once he gets the ball, that's a nightmare. And Brian's right about something else. We will talk about Jeremiah Smith. <laughs> I also want to talk about Jordan Lyle, who's another Ohio State commit who was at the game. And a Darius Hayes, a Florida commit, uh, is Miami putting real smoke together to try and flip some of these players who are committed elsewhere? We're only getting started. We got the recruiting overlord, Brian Smith, with me. I am Alex Dono. Keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Keep it locked to FanDuel. My friends, you can snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than right now to get in on the action. And our Miami Hurricanes, despite you know what happened last weekend, 
Vegas thinks it's going to be close. North Carolina are three and a half point favorites at home. I, I thought it would be a bigger number there, but there seems to be some faith that Miami can make this a game, maybe even have a chance to win the game. The app at FanDuel is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. And for the everydayers, if you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level, join our exclusive SMS texting community through subtext. I include a link in the show description below. You get text messages directly from my phone to yours. You can ask me one-on-one -on -one questions on there. I give you guys recruiting scoops, breaking news, show previews, and sometimes just random thoughts. Uh, it's a lot of fun on there. Try it free for 14 days. And then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there. Click the link in the show description below to join our subtext community. Uh, we're joined by my colleague at allhurricanes.com and Locked On Network recruiting expert, Brian Smith. So, you know, Brian, um, I know Jeremiah Smith, Ohio State commit, Shamanad, five-star receiver who was at the game. You know, he had said prior to the Georgia Tech game, you know, he appreciated Miami's offense, vertical passing attack. Unfortunately, it was by and large, an off day for the offense on uh, on Saturday night. Um, how are things going with Jeremiah's recruitment? Because he's obviously not shut things down where he's taken other visits. Where do you think <clears throat> Miami stands there? I, I think it'll be Ohio State or Miami in the end. There's still a chance, <clears throat> excuse me, for Florida State or Florida. But he's going to go to multiple visits. I know he's got at least one trip to Tallahassee coming up. I haven't heard the date for that, and I, I'm pretty sure he's going to go to Gainesville if he hasn't already. So there's a ways to go. But I think the, I think he was at um, the 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 game where they only scored 22 points. Oh, against, was that the 22? Uh, oh, that's right. Charlotte. Yeah, yeah he was at that game. Yeah, terrible in that game. It's just yeah. you. He's not picking the right games to go to. I'm gonna have to get on him about that. It's just <laughs> I I don't know when he goes to Florida State. The Florida State coaches should be worried. Um, <laughs> It's he's very open minded kid, like I've said before on this show. I wouldn't bet on any one thing, but at the same time, at one point, I just thought it was all Ohio State. Yeah, now I don't think it's as much. And I, Jeremiah is very mature for his age, quiet kid, doesn't say much. Got to, you know, you got to ask him to get something out of him, just his nature. He's going to evaluate the whole season. If he thinks Florida State's the place, that's fine. If he thinks Florida's the place, that's fine. If he thinks it's Miami, it will. He will evaluate everything, and that's just the way he is. So Miami's squarely in it. He's got a bunch of guys in his ear. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, I'm not too worried about his recruitment. He had a fellow Ohio State verbal commit also at the game, and that's St. Thomas Aquinas four-star running back Jordan Lyle. That's yep. an interesting one, Brian, that you know Miami is apparently endeavoring to try to flip him. And keep in mind, they flipped Mark Fletcher from an Ohio State commitment last year. So <laughs> there seems right. to be a pattern here with <laughs> flipping OSU commits. But at the same time, uh, Miami right now has verbally committed two very good running backs in Kevin Riley and Chris Wheatley Humphrey. Um, the idea of taking three, it, it just seems a little greedy. But you know what's going on with Jordan Lyle? I've been trying to figure this one out for a little while. I think he's been to campus multiple times this year. I, I could be wrong. I get the I get the players mixed up once in a while. But I was looking at it, and I'm like, the only thing I can think of is that, A, my Mario just – he wants as many of the STA kids, American Heritage kids. Right. He wants that pipeline just constantly coming through. Yeah. And there's always a chance you could lose one just like you can gain one. Right. That's all I can think because three running backs in a class is a lot. So – I don't know if there's something I'm unaware of, but if, I mean, that would be one of the greatest running back classes of all time to get those three, because Kevin Riley is a super football player. And I watched Wheatley Humphrey the other day. He's vastly improved. He was already one of the fastest players in the country, but he's added more size and strength and he takes on contact better. I mean, they don't, I'm, and I love Jordan. I mean, he's a great football player, but why would you need three? Mario may look at things a little differently than me though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and by the way, I know we already talked about Nye Carr, but I did. I want to bring up this note 
uh, which is always nice to see. So not only did he commit to Miami, he has said he is shutting down his recruitment the rest of the way, Brian. So this is, I know, you know, we just talked about a guy like Jeremiah Smith, who's been committed to Ohio State, but he's been taking visits all over the state of Florida. Nikar has said he is shutting his down. So he's supposedly not going to be taking any more visits or anything like that until National Signing Day. But, you know, uh, for another potential flip candidate, this young man has spent a lot of time visiting Miami, and it's not like he lives, you know, 30 minutes away or anything like that, lives over in uh, Largo, Florida, near Tampa, and that's Adarius Hayes, who's a Florida-committed linebacker. Um, I know Miami definitely are trying to flip him from his Florida commitment because they want another linebacker in this class. They like this player a lot. Um as a Florida commit, he's saying all the right things. He keeps saying, I'm 100% locked in. I'm just taking visits. But at the same time, he is taking visits to Miami. So sometimes actions speak louder than words. What do you think is going on there? I'm a little surprised. I know Adarius pretty well, and he's a Gators fan. Like, that's school oh. he grew up rooting for. Yeah. So that one caught me off guard the first time I heard about it a month or two ago. Yeah. But this is the second time he's been to campus. I don't know what has changed or if he just wants to go in another direction, but if he had taken one visit, okay. But the second one tells me, and it, it could be more than Miami, but at least Miami's in serious consideration. So I, I don't know the deal there. Um, he is a thumper. I think he'll eventually put his hand in the dirt, but he can play a little of both. Very powerful kid. Great guy too. I think that Miami would do quite well. He's a top 100 player in my book. That's, I mean, that's only going to bolster your roster even more. So it's a unique situation. And now the question is, because he hasn't taken an official, can Miami get him back for an official? Right. Unofficials are one thing, but it's it's nowhere near the same. You don't get to meet with the academic. You're not going through the whole spiel. So he needs to see it if he's going to do that. I would imagine that would take place in December after the season, but we'll see. Great kid, big time player. All right. So, and if Miami wants to keep the recruiting momentum going, like it's it's one thing to lose a tough game. It's really how you bounce back that matters. Miami's got a great opportunity this Saturday. Keeping yes, in is. mind the Canes have not done well in recent years against North Carolina. Uh, they actually were better against UNC last year than you probably think they were. And they did rattle Drake May a little bit in that matchup last season. But now you've got to go into the Lions' den. You're going into Keenan, Keenan Memorial Stadium this Saturday to take on uh, an undefeated 12th ranked North Carolina team. Brian and I are going to talk about it. Biggest challenges, biggest opportunities against the Tar Heels. You know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. I know you're keeping it locked to LinkedIn. If you're a small business owner, you got to get on this because these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. You add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile and spread the word that you're hiring. Then simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen. Guys, it's almost Friday, kind of. I mean, we're two days away from Friday. On Friday, 11 a.m. to noon every Friday, Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. It's an honor to be part of that show with Drake Toll and Kenton Gibbs and the awesome crew behind the scenes. We bring you guys breakdowns on the biggest games, biggest storylines, Heisman race, coaches on the hot seat. We're going to be talking about all of that this and every Friday, 11 a.m. to noon on Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. You can check it out right here on Locked On Canes YouTube and on the YouTube channel of every Locked On College team. So you want to check that stuff out. Brian Smith is with us. Uh, so, Brian, you know, I, I mentioned when we were talking about FanDuel earlier, um, honestly, uh, maybe I was just so, like, hung over from what happened against Georgia Tech. I really thought that this game against Carolina would open – 
with the Tar Heels being around a touchdown favorite at home. It actually opened with Carolina favored by three. I guess maybe more of the money has come in on Carolina early because it was at three and a half the last I checked. But Miami's getting more respect here than I thought against a really good Tar Heels team. How do you think this matchup is going to play out on Saturday? I think part of that money is based on the following. Carolina started the year, and they're undefeated. I'm not taking anything away from them, and we'll yeah. certainly talk about Drake May. He's good, just by the way. But they had nine sacks against South Carolina, which is incredible. But they've only averaged like one sack since, and they've still had defensive problems. Uh, I, I'm not convinced, and based on what I've read, I don't think a lot of the Sharps are convinced that Carolina's defense is completely legit. Nobody's doubting Drake May. Let me be right. very right. clear about that. He's as good a run-pass quarterback as there is in the country, and I did say run-pass. He can run. He was their leading rusher last year, by yeah. the way. Odd stat, which is probably not good for him. But anyway, Miami has more raw talent on the roster. That's the thing. And they have nothing but motivation because everybody's throwing rocks at them right now. This is a history that's not just a Miami thing. When teams get kicked and they're down, they usually rebound and they're galvanized. I think that's part of the line. And it's also one of the reasons that, well, everybody can read about it on Friday, but my prediction at all hurricanes for this game is going to be that it's going to be an instant classic. I think this is going to come down to the absolute wire. I think the, the betting line is about right, mm, to yeah. be honest. Right, right, give or take three points yeah. one way or the other. And I think this will be an instant class. It's 7.30. It's the ABC game. It, this is going to be cool because we're going to find out a lot of things about Miami. So I think they're going to be ready to roll because nobody wants to get kicked forever. You know, I let it go. And you know, like coming into the lead and the announcers and they're going to be, when they walk out of the tunnel, people will be yelling at them. It's not smart to poke the bear, but I guarantee you UNC fans will do it. That'll yeah. just help Miami even more. So. Yeah, I'm already seeing these uh, these message boards posts from UNC fans who are like, well, you know, my, Miami, they're they're the type of team when they lose one game, they just crumble. And listen, man, that um, sounds like North Carolina historically, honestly. Yeah, they, maybe a look it's in the true. mirror would be nice. But also, they're not wrong about Miami. Historically, I've just got to hope that this team is different with the way they respond. Right. And I appreciated hearing from. Matt Lee and Tyler Van Dyke yesterday. And, you know, when we saw coaches on Monday, they, they said the practice, like the Monday practice was really good and really hard, which is exactly what you need. And the most important thing that Cristobal said was, you know, as of Monday, I'm sure that they were saying this probably after the game on Saturday night, they just want to play again. They want to get back on the field. They want to take it out on North Carolina. These guys, you know, hopefully this isn't breaking them mentally. Hopefully it's waking them up, Brian. Usually people will go with the line of you can go two ways. I think there's a little bit more than that, but two primary, either you're going to take it and you're going to stay down or you're going to get up and you're going to come out swinging. Yeah. I think that the game will, once again, I think it'll be a very good football game. I'm not, I don't think Carolina's blowing Miami out or vice versa, but at the same time, Miami's physicality, I will guarantee it will be very, very good. And I know Matt Lee from when I used to cover UCF, that is a guy that was, I'm sure you saw the video. He was not happy at the end of that game. And he was questioning a little bit, but you won't question his effort. And he's the leader up front. I think Miami is going to run downhill on North Carolina a little bit more. They've got a pretty decent run defensive late. Mm -hmm. But again, Miami's O one. If you look at it from one to five, all of those guys in some capacity are going to be at the NFL combine whenever their college careers end. That's a lot of freaking talent, man. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're perfect. And obviously last week they were far from it. Yeah, And hats off to Georgia Tech's defensive coaches. They did yeah. a good job and they, they threw some things at them they didn't expect and it worked. It's good for them. Carolina's defense is what it is. Their coordinator's been around forever and maligned. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier for the Hurricanes offensive staff to prepare. And I think that's going to be a very big part of this. Miami's going to be able to run the ball and watch Matt Lee in the interior right at him. So Brian Smith here, he's not only the recruiting expert here on the Locked On Network, he's also a great colleague of mine at All Hurricanes. What are you working on, Brian, for the rest of the week before that UNC game? What are, what can people expect at allhurricanes.com? The piece that I've actually got the notes for sitting right here next to me, this is, this is a big thing because it combines my favorite things, predictions for the game and recruiting, because I think this game will be a barometer for what Miami needs to finish the 24 class and, and start on 25 because Carolina does have a lot of talent. They oh, yeah. do have a lot of talent. I mean, mm -hmm. 
if you get out of place even an inch against Drake May, he will figure it out whether he needs to audible to a run, a different – he is extremely gifted above the shoulders. This is going to be interesting because obviously like Cam took some heat at the end of the last game, and rightfully so. They're going to have a challenge that's going to be a blast. The secondary of Miami has a lot of talent. Going against Drake May might be my second favorite thing to watch in this game. So I'm going to talk about that, and I'm also going to be doing a little bit more with recruiting kind of like big picture stuff because Miami's class is underrated. And like we were talking earlier, the running back room, et cetera, they've improved so much in one year. It's amazing. Yeah, no, no doubt. Well, great stuff to come. Brian Smith, thank you so much. You can check him out at FB Scout underscore Florida on X slash Twitter. And folks, on tomorrow's episode, we're going to have a big Locked On crossover. Isaac Shade from Locked On Tar Heels is going to join me. Uh, and you know, Isaac, he was not kicking me while I was down. He's one of the nicest dudes. Like yeah, he, he was texting me after the Georgia Tech loss. And the way he was talking to me was if I had just lost a relative or something like the way he like he was being so nice. He's like, man, I just want to make sure you're OK. Was... <laughs> and you know what? I wasn't, but I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all recover in time, my friend. We sure do. So we will talk to you guys again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.